and turn it over to Carrie. Thanks so much. Um, I'm actually going to start us off. I wanted to go ahead and introduce Lumen. My name is Lexi. Um, I've been with Lumen for a very short amount of time, but um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, so I just wanted to start us off. Carrie, can you actually go ahead and go on to the next slide? Um, I just wanted to start it off with um, Lumen's mission. Our mission is to enable unprecedented learning for all students. Um, these figures are from a study done in 2018 or study a collection of data in 2018. Um, as of 2018, we had over 200 active supported institutions. Um, we're probably closer to 300,000 students currently supported and well over $20 million in savings that's been passed along to those students. We have well over 2000 faculty resource requests that we have fulfilled. We have more than 27 million visits to our free and open content. And many of the at-risk students that are now using Lumen resources are passing their courses and earning much higher grades, which as we all know, is a very big deal, especially moving forward with open sourced content. We want to increase, we want to increase the effectiveness of the material and decrease the cost as much as possible. So if you don't mind moving on to our next slide. So everyone in the system is really stretched right now. It's making it a lot harder to figure out which problems we need to tack on and how to tackle them. Um, so looking at this 2016 survey on textbooks and course materials, less than 50% of community college students are earning the credentials. 67% of students are going without the textbooks, mostly because they can't afford them. 48% are taking fewer courses because of the textbook cost. 50% of faculty say it's too hard to find OER, and 76% of faculty members are contingent labor. We are really proud of the courses that we've produced at Lumen. We have two main products. We have Waymaker and we have Ohm, which is what Carrie is gonna be speaking about today. Uh, if you wanna move on to that last slide, that is mine, Carrie. How to make learning with OER more effective every semester. So our challenge that we're being faced with is making it more effective. So the essential ingredients that we have determined are one, openly licensed content. By using the open educational resources, everyone has access to the content as well as permission to make changes aimed at improving learning. Learning data. When we instrument OER to tell us how well the content supports student learning, we can analyze the data to show where improvements are most needed. Lumen's large nationwide data set drawn from Waymaker and OWN courses being taught across the US provides strong evidence about where the learning disconnects are happening. Where desired, we can also dive deeper into what's happening in individual programs or departments and see how they compare to the national averages. Number three, collaborative and iterative learning design. Collaborating with faculty, especially situations like this with Carrie, where she's willing to speak on our behalf, um, makes it easier for us to evaluate the problems, make changes, and test the improvements to our content and learning design to address the underperforming learning outcomes. Um, I'm going to leave it at that with Lumen. If anybody has any additional questions, um, feel free to, to, re to reach out to me. Um, but Carrie, Carrie is a professor of mathematics and statistics at Randolph Community College, and she is going to speak on her, ex her experience with using Lumen's course materials. Hi, thank you. So, um, I have been using Lumen um, maybe about four or five years now. I actually learned about them at a different, or maybe this OER conference. I can't remember which one. Um, but I have had great success with them and other OER resources. So I just wanted to share them with you all. If you have questions, please feel free to ask them at any time. I will do my best to monitor chat as well as everything else that's on my screen at the moment. Um, but for right now, I'm gonna talk about three different OER resources. One is the Lumen text that I use. Lumen has um, texts that are theirs unless I'm mistaken. And then they also have other text in there as well, like OpenStax. So I use a Lumen text for my 
uh, Math 143 Quantitative Literacy. And then they also have the OpenStax textbook accessible through their um, platforms at what as well. And I can also use OM with um, the OpenStax text alongside um, the Lumen text. So I also use Desmos, which a lot of people probably are familiar with. If you are not, please let me know. And I use CodeApp, which I'm going to be showing about in just a little bit. I have a lot of engaging tasks that I use in quantitative literacy, and I am fine sharing them at any time. My email I will give to you again at the end of the screen, but it was also on the screen a minute ago. So I will introduce you to a couple of those now, but I'm more than welcome to share any of the ones that I have for you. And then the results um, of like kind of a pre post OER very informal results of what happened when I implement implemented OER. So the textbook that I use for quantitative literacy, I have a lot of links in here and I'm going to do my best to get them all to show. I have to show my entire desktop so please excuse everything else that you're going to see. Um, Can you guys see my entire desktop right now? Uh, yeah, we see your your slides. And the book. And the book. OK, beautiful. Hopefully, they will work at the same time here or not. So when I'm going through the textbooks, what I like to look for is the content that we're covering in 143. And I don't know about a lot of you, um, if you teach quantitative literacy, but the content was not extremely helpful um, or easy to find in one textbook. And so, especially when it comes to finance, there's a lot of things that some textbooks include with finance. And our department does not want to teach about stocks and bonds. Um, we really wanna teach kind of the very basics of finance and saving, and we kind of go into taxes a little bit. So this text was perfect for us and it helped explain those topics for us very well. And that is one of the things that I'm going to show you a little bit. So a little bit about OM. It is a massive uh, teacher created question banks involved, algorithmically generated problem sets. So you can do that lovely randomization to try and prevent um, cheating and other things. Uh, you can do your assessments in OM, and there are course packs available for you. So when I signed up for OM, they had a course pack for me. I, all I had to do was go in through it and pick some certain problems and certain sections that I wanted to assign. And um, it automatically, well, when you're working with Lumen, it depends. Um, I have Moodle. And I know that it works with Moodle and it integrates well with the LMS there. I did have to get my tech team involved a little bit because they don't give me the permissions to upload a course pack. Um, so it depends on your institution as to what they allow you to do. But Lumen helped us through that entire process. So if you look at Moodle, that's what I'm going to open up next. You will see how well the integration is. So this is a course that I have taught in the past. And when we can scroll down to a certain part down here, I have these titles in, but all the rest of this stuff come, came directly in from Lumen. And um, I can show you what it looks like on the background too, if that's what you're kind of wanting. But my students loved this format. It was very easy. I love this format because my questions, um, especially for online learning, dropped and people were understanding where they needed to go and what they needed to do. So when you're in here, it's probably gonna make me sign in, just FYI. Oh, nope, it didn't. Um, it'll take you straight to the text that I want them to read. And so they'll read this portion of the textbook. There will be problem sets in here to help them. Um, there's a lot of different things that are involved into the textbook, like videos and practice problems. Um, they also have some just-in-time review and they are expanding that at all times. And um, when you go to do like a homework or something, the homework you can open up right here and students can work on it right in Moodle. So the best thing about this is, is my students had to sign into one place, Moodle, and they had all of their resources. And um, as you notice when here, 
like I said, I use Desmos and a wonderful thing that Lumen has is that when you click in here, Desmos is right there. So everything on one screen, because I can start hiding all of this stuff so that we can actually utilize this a little more. I wish I could hide this stuff a little better <laughs> to the right, but I can't. Um, but my students really liked this because they were able to access everything right here. Another really good thing about the integration of this is when I was having to proctor my exams, especially when we switched to totally online, um, the proctoring software worked beautifully because since it opened up in Moodle, it had absolutely no problems. And so I could just start an exam in Moodle and then it would start working and uh, recording everything that it needed to record. And since the problems were directly linked within the Moodle site. Back to the PowerPoint. And so then I was going to talk about the topics in finance. They really were, um, it's my favorite text that I have found so far because it does a really good job, but it also does not complicate things. So I was going to click in here maybe so you can see the practice problems. And so they're very, um, normal practice problems that I would see within any textbook. But then the textbook was very inclusive. It had a bunch of resources to help my students learn these topics because they do not do very well with learning them. So it starts with the learning outcomes. And then you'll see there's simple interest, places to read, examples, videos that show them how to do the problems. And even better, when you scroll down a little bit more, you'll have these try it problems. And so you can submit it right here. And it will also kind of show you um, the answers on certain examples when you're going through. So I just wanted to show you how extensive it is and how many videos there really were. And so to get help here, there's a video, evidently two videos for that problem. So my students loved all of it being right here on one page. And then that'll also help you how to use the calculator. And then, like I said, with Desmos already integrated into the homework, it works really well. So another open education resource that I use is CodeApp. And CodeApp is a common online data analysis platform. So I'm not sure if you teach quantitative literacy or if you teach other classes. I primarily teach quantitative literacy and statistics. And um, one thing that I really love about statistics is being able to manipulate graphs and for students to be able to compare and do real like quantitative analysis, real exploratory data set analysis, qualitative, quantitative, all of those variables. That is also a portion of quantitative literacy. So being able to have a dynamically changing platform for me to use statistics was very important for me. Um, CODAP, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of it. There is an introductory document is what they call it. To me, it's like a tutorial. And so when you open up in CODAP, it'll open up in here and it'll show you how to do separate things. I have all these links for you, by the way. So I'm going to share those um, in just a moment as well. But I'm not gonna go through the tutorial, of course. I just wanted to let you know that it happened. And yes, I see a raised hand. Does anyone have any questions? Can you guys? Do you have the option to speak? <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, attendees do not have the option to speak, but they're more than welcome to submit the question um, to the chat or okay. the Q&A, and we'll help monitor and read those off. All right. So whoever raised their hand or whatever, if you could put your question in chat, we will do our best to answer it. Um, when it comes to CODAP, you can try CODAP. You can actually save your data in here if you want to, or you can create a new document for students. And what I love about it is I can save it with my data already in, and then I can share that link. And that's what I'm getting ready to um, show you as well. If you wanna know the code behind it, you wanna change some things, they have that here. They also have sample data sets um, available as well. So what teachers like most about CODAP 
It's free and it runs in your browser. So no plugins, no installations. It works on Chromebooks, works on everything, right? Um, it's easy to prepare documents for your students and create links that directly move the data in there for them. It's actually descended from Fathom and Tinkerplots. I don't know if you're familiar with those. Um, I was in the past. <laughs> so I really like the dynamic um, involvement in CodeApp. Uh, traditional stat tools are actually coming like confidence intervals and such for statistics. But right now I'm talking about quantitative literacy, so I don't really need those. It is open source and written in JavaScript and TypeScript, and it has an open architecture. So it's possible to write plugins and do whatever you want with it. I don't get that involved with it, but I do, um, I have dabbled with it a little bit. So if I can just show you a little bit here, I'm gonna click on this roller coaster data link. But before I do that, I'm going to provide all of the links for you into the chat. So here are the links that I've talked about pretty much every single one of them. And the one that I'm going to open up is the one titled the roller coaster roller coaster data link so that I can show that for you in case you wanted to look at it as well. So like I said, within CodeApp, it already has the data uploaded for me here. So the task that goes along with this data set is linked right here, if it'll let me. Yep, or not, okay. And um, I cannot take credit for this task. It was, I was actually in these e-modules and then I asked the organizers of it and they said that we could share this as long as we give credit to them. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm sharing this task right here. And I have other tasks as well. I have also modified these tasks depending upon the course that I'm using them in. Um, and I will gladly share those modifications. The only problem with that is most of them are already set in Moodle. So if Moodle is your LMS, great. If it is not, then they will take a little bit more work. So you open up the data set right here, and then the data set will walk, the task will walk you through, say, name a coaster with the smallest max height. So what you can do within Code App is if I'm looking at max height, so that's right here, I want to make a graph. So all I do is I go here and I click on graph, and then I can just drag max height to the bottom and I can easily see which one has the max height right so then it says smallest maximum height I can easily see that as well and then what else can you find in the data table about the coasters with the smallest height and it kind of gives you a hint look under the ruler so if you go over here to the ruler you can have code app calculate things for you so we can count the count, the mean, the median, the standard deviation. We can even throw a box plot on there. And I can discuss all of this information with my students and my students can analyze this information and make assumptions um, and summary statistics involved within the statistics of, for this one, max height. Another thing is name the coaster with the tallest maximum height. So that's on here. Um, I can add movable lines so that I can shade certain regions. So I'm going to take this stuff off. And I'm going to add a movable line. This is one thing I like to do at the very beginning because I like for students to pick maybe where the biggest percent of the data might fall and kind of getting them to conceptually think about what a typical data value would be or the mean in that case. And then they can... Um, mess around and they can actually put in the mean on the data set when they finally um, learn what mean is because I normally use this to introduce it. A lot of things that you can do here, we can compare other things on the same graph. This is one of my favorite features about code app as well. So I'm going to click off of my ruler and I'm going to remove my movable lines. And there are videos to help your students walk through all of this, by the way, and for you. <laughs> um, 
if you're new to the software. So if I wanted to look and see if there was some kind of a relationship between the max height and what the track is made out of, I can bring the track or how long the track is. I can bring that on here. And there are other attributes within this. So maybe you're open, the type. So I can look at max height and it how it relates to track length. And what I even love better than that is I can take a third attribute, drop it in the middle, and it will color code based on a third attribute. So my students can sit here and they can look that the highest one was still, well, the shortest one was also still, and they can figure out a bunch of information um, about how to relate all of these things. A really cool feature on here too is the map. And I haven't used the map for many data sets except for this one. And that's not how I wanna use it. <laughs> I want to do it with this one, um, but I'll show you that one in a minute too. Um, my time is kind of running up. So it's really nice because they can click on the map and click where they are personally and they can find the kind of the roller coasters that are near them. So that is how CodeApp looks and works. And there is one of the tasks, which they are very extensive tasks and you can assign these and I assign them within Moodle and Moodle will grade them for me, especially if you have an online class. And that I wanted to leave with five more minutes. So extremely quick overview of kind of Lumen, the text. One thing I wanted to show you that I haven't kind of showed you is the homework platform from the perspective of the ohm learning so I go in here and I can just change things um, and it looks very similar to what I had uploaded into my Moodle site so anything I can work on in here and then it'll automatically change in my Moodle site because it's linked and one of my favorite things is the mass change assignments forums dates everything I can change all of that in here and it will automatically update into my Moodle as well as um, grades so that's it has anyone got any questions see none none came in through the q a carrie um this was really informative and like you said i think it, it'll probably be one of those things that once you're doing it people have questions so um so we'll make sure your contact information is is available for folks um and we're we're at our time so if they have questions um you can get in touch with with carrie or with lexi i think they will be happy to help you uh so thanks carrie for your presentation and for lexi and uh everybody for attending we'll see you at the next session have a good afternoon <laughs>